You don't want to buy another Strat or Les Paul? Here's five guitars you should look at instead. Before we start the video, we found out that 89% of people watching our videos aren't subscribed to the channel. If you like the videos we make and want to check out more, please subscribe to the channel and help it grow. Hi, Sam from Guitar Village here. What I have in front of me is a Fender Strat, one of the most iconic guitars available. It's probably the place that most people start learning guitar. If not, they'd probably look at something like maybe a Tele or a Les Paul. We all know what these guitars offer and what sounds they have on board and which players have used them. We thought we'd put together a video of five different guitars that maybe you've overlooked, which can offer you something a little bit different. First up, I thought I would jump in with a 12 string. Right here we have a Rickenbacker 330 12. It's a really nice guitar, it looks great. Uh, it's made in the USA as well, so it's a really high pedigree. What's really interesting with the 12 string is you get those extra octave strings ringing out so it makes chords sound very full. <laughs> Loads of great players have used Rickenbackers over the years, like George Harrison from the Beatles, Paul Weller, and even Tom Petty. They've been going for around 90 years now, Rickenbacker, and they started out initially building things like Hawaiian guitars and lap steels before moving on to building their electric 12 strings, which are probably the most popular electric 12 strings available. What I like about playing one of these is that because it feels very different to your Strat or Les Paul or Tele, is that you can't really just pick it up and noodle on it. You have to work a bit harder to get the sounds out so it will push you towards maybe some melodic playing and some chord work. So this is a great guitar if you're a songwriter. Okay, so moving on, we are looking at this Gretsch limited edition Falcon. This is in two-tone copper and Sahara metallic. We did a video recently about some history on Gretsch, so I won't go too much into that, but do check the video out. Some of the players that have used Gretsches over the years, you've got like Chet Atkins, Billy Gibbons, Brian Setzer, so some really top level players. The reason I think you might want to try one of these guitars out and consider buying one is because you get a lot of the feel you get from say your Gibson, but you get something that's a little bit different sound wise. It is a bigger body, so you do have to get used to that, but because it's hollow, and you've also got lower output pickups, you get a really nice open sound from the guitar. Add some big speed vibrato into there as well and it will really sweeten up some of the single notes or chords you might be playing. I find that when I pick up a Gretsch, like a Falcon or one of the 6120s, you've got a bit more room for your fingers in there, so you can do a little bit of finger picking as well, so you can really change up some of the style you're doing. I mentioned it. Did you? Yeah. Did you actually? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was just... I've got it on camera, if I didn't... <laughs> I also find that if you add, say, slapback delay, maybe some compression and a bit of drive to your sound, those notes really bloom and sound very full.
are looking at this Fender Jazzmaster and Fender offsets in general. This particular one I have in front of me is the Troy Van Leeuwen signature. It's very distinct looking in the copper aged finish. Some of the players that have used the Jazzmasters and Jaguars and Fender offsets over the years include Johnny Marr, you've got Elvis Costello, Kurt Cobain used one, and even Jim Root as well. So really versatile bunch of players. It gets overlooked by a lot of players who tend to go for the strats and tellies. I think the offset body might put some people off because they feel that you have to stretch a bit further to reach the lower frets on the guitar. I don't particularly find that's true. However, because of the offset body, reaching the upper frets is very easy. I would consider buying one of these and I think you should too is because you've got the Fender feel in the guitar but being fitted with soap bar pickups or if you're looking at say a Jaguar having those big single coil sounds in there it gives you something very different and having the separate circuit which brings the neck pickup in with a slightly warmer sound changes it very much too. <laughs> guitar on our list is this Eastman T64V. Very similar to the Gibson ES330 and the Epiphone Casino. We did do a video comparison on Eastman guitars and their Gibson counterparts recently, so do check that out for a bit more information on Eastman guitars. Looking at, say, the Epiphone Casino, you've seen Paul Weller use one tons in the past. Gary Clark Jr. is currently using one. This guitar often gets overlooked because players that have gone from playing a Strat, Tele, or maybe a Les Paul, will jump straight into a 335 and won't consider this. I think it's well worth considering because it does have sub benefits that the 335 misses out on. Being completely hollow, not having the center block like on a 335 makes it very lightweight. It also makes the guitar ring very nicely acoustically if you're playing it. Having P90 pickups gives you a much broader sound spectrum, whereas the humbuckers have a very focused mid range. neck is set deeper into the body so reaching the lower end of the fretboard is so much easier I don't even have to stretch to reach that and the sounds with the big speed you're gonna get from there having the vibrato and the P90s hollow body it really changes the whole feel and sound of the guitar The final guitar on our list is not a guitar at all, kind of is, it's a bass. This particular one I have in front of me is the Fender 75th Anniversary Commemorative Jazz Bass. I would always urge guitarists to pick up a bass, have one kicking around at home. I think it's a great recording tool. I think playing bass as well, if you play in a band on bass, you're going to learn to lock in with the drummer a lot more. You'll also learn to use your fingers if you're already not doing that on the guitar. It's something that you'll definitely have to do on bass, unless you're playing something like punk and you want to just use a pick. Another thing that you'll learn to do on bass that you won't necessarily naturally do on guitar is you'll learn to outline the chords with single notes. 
So when a bass player plays the groove, they're going to just play some notes from that chord, whereas the guitar will just play that chord. If you are thinking of moving from guitar and playing a little bit of bass and using it as a studio tool, if you don't want to just get you know, a full-size jazz bass or P bass, something like that, have a look at the Fender Mustang, some of the smaller bodied ones. The scale length shorter, everything's sort of brought in towards the body a little bit more, so it's a lot easier to play as well. Okay, so there's five different options on guitar for you. Next time you're in a guitar shop, instead of just jumping straight in with another Strat, a Tele or a Les Paul, check some of those five out. You may be surprised. There may be some new sounds in there you really like, and there may be some sounds in there that really suit you as well. All the gear used in today's video will be linked in the description below, so please check them out if you want to find out more about them. We really enjoyed making this video and we're going to be releasing new videos every Friday at 4 o'clock, so subscribe to the channel to check those out and don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Yeah, cool. Lovely. It's so easy to get a good sound or something like that. On. Yeah.